Well, Allah never forgets us. But how do you want him to remember you? Allah never forgets the ones who disobey him too. Correct? It's not the same. You know? <laughs> the way, look, the Quran, which is also called the Zikrullah, right? The Quran is also called the Zikrullah. Yeah, at least some people they know. Huh? And in that book of Zikrullah, Shaitan is also mentioned. Correct? Yes. Abu Jahil is mentioned, Abu Lahab is mentioned, Firaun is mentioned, Nimrud is also mentioned. Correct? So Allah is also remembering them. But definitely not in the same way that Allah is remembering the Holy Prophet. The way he is remembering the angels and all the prophets and those ones that they love Allah. So, how do you want your Lord to remember you? How do you want people to remember you? You want people to remember you as a most perfect form? People. How do you want people to remember you? This world is teaching us. No, no, no. I'm talking about this world. Leave religion and leave other things. This world. Everyone is trying to make a mark in this world, correct? When you're alive, they want everyone to know you. And when you're gone, they want everyone to what? Remember you. Meaning that to be remembered in this world, they say you have to what? Leave a legacy. Leave a legacy. Meaning you do something that you'll always be remembered for that action that you're doing. Those evil ones, they leave a bad legacy. Everyone is going to remember, oh, you did a very bad thing. But the good ones, they leave a good legacy, and everyone is going to say, oh, you did a very good thing. That's how you remember, right? How you live your life and what you leave after you live your life. These are the things that makes people to remember you. So, how you want Allah to remember you? Similar. Because this world is just a reflection. We just, like what we talked about, this is the world of examples. Just take an example from this world. You understand? It's not that difficult, which is why spirituality is not philosophy. It's not only very, very, very smart people they can understand. No. It's in each and every one of us, smart or not smart. Child, adult, man, woman, it's inside of us. Because they say you need prophets and you need saints to just say, look, look at it like this. Oh, it's like that? It's so simple. Yes, it's like that. Then they say, oh, okay, I can try to do that. You understand right away. That's why the uh, prophets and the saints, when they come up with examples and stories, it's always very simple things. So that everyone, because everyone can understand. It is very deep, but it is simple. So, how you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then to remember you? It's how you live your life and what you leave behind after you pass from the life. So, how you live your life is how you're going to die. How you're going to die is how you're going to be raised. In Islam, a very big thing, the past, not anymore, because people become very selfish. In the past, there's a very, very big thing called wakaf. Always wakaf. Even rich ones, they say, no, no, no. All my wealth, I leave to wakaf, not to my children. They can find their own money. Because I'm not going to be now buying with my money, if I give to them, they use in the wrong way. I'm not going to be responsible to buy fire in my grave. <coughs> They're very smart. That means their attachment to money now, it is according to faith and it is real. Right? It is real. They believe, they say our wealth is like wearing a golden chain around our neck. 
made of fire. He said, no, 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 walk off. Give it, give it, like this. Not anymore. Everyone wants to leave their money and everything for their children. They don't care for the umat anymore. Correct or no? So, and I'm not talking about rich people only, huh? even poor people. I cannot do anything, at least I can leave this. Let this be an amal, a work that I do that will continue giving me a rewards and blessings up till kiamat. What they do, sometimes they say, okay, take this money and uh, dig up a well people can take. I'm going to plant fruit trees. Mm. I want to give to this orphanage, do this, this, this. So people start, they care for each other. They care. So how you want your Lord to remember you now? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim fazkuruni azkurkum Remember me and I will remember you. How Allah is remembering Fir'aun? You say it is Allah's fault? No. He is burning right now. It's because of how he remembers his Lord. That is how Allah is remembering him now. You understand? How Abu Lahab is remembering his Lord when he was alive. That he earned the title of the father of the fire. That is why Allah is remembering him as the father of the fire. That is burning now. So how are you going to remember your Lord? That is what you're going to get. How are we going to remember our Lord now? So many they're remembering their Lord as a businessman. I invest this much, I'm going to get this much. Some they remember their Lord, a person that I'm doing things out of fear because he's going to punish me if I don't do it. Some they remember their Lord as just providing for them whatever that they want. But some, they remember their Lord with love. Some, they remember their Lord only for their Lord to be pleased with them. Some, they remember their Lord as Lord, Lord, Rab, and they are servants. We cannot remember our Lord the way that He deserves to be remembered. That much we can say. <coughs> but who you're following to teach you how to remember your Lord, that is key. You may be a Muslim, you may say the Shahadat, you may have some Sunnats, but who is your guide? Do you have a guide? And how is that guide teaching you to remember your Lord? You have no guide. You're praying, you're doing everything. The world is teaching you, you need to be taking as much from this world as possible. That is your guide. That is how you remember your Lord then. You lose so much. And then there are those that they're just remembering their Lord. They're not really asking for anything. They say, I'm weak, you are rich, you are strong, whatever that I need, you are going to give it to me. But I'm worried. I'm very worried and I'm very sad that I'm very far away from you. That I'm a disobedient one and I'm asking you to help me to become an obedient one. Straight away, there will be a guide there in front of you. Say that, now walk this way a little bit, do this way a little bit. Now, it starts, your work starts. Your jihad al-akbar starts, the struggle against your nafs, which, <laughs> which is very heavy. Uh, in reality, it is a very heavy worship, very heavy worship. That's why the fast, in terms of worship, it is the heaviest of all the worships, the fast. 
that the Prophet says, the reward that comes through fasting, even I don't know. What is fasting? Fighting against your desires, that's all. Inshallah. We hold on, inshallah. Slowly. Slowly. To understand your limits is important too. See, we cannot go, we cannot do all of this. But let us just hold on to our shaykh, inshallah. And try as much as we can. Don't make any excuses. Uh, be okay. What is going to make you to let go from your shaykh? Your stubbornness. Your anger. You're not understanding your arrogance and your envy. You're going to let go. If you understand that, more you're going to hold on tightly because more you're saying, these shaitans, they are right behind me. I need to hold on even more. When you don't understand those shaitans, then you say, what? Why do I have to hold on? What shaitan? No shaitan. The shaitan is circling inside of you. May Allah forgive me and bless you, inshallah. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al-fatiha. Amen.